Hello and welcome back to learnaboutice.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform an anterior chamber paracentesis at the slit lamp. This is a very useful skill every eye doctor should master. Patients with acutely elevated eye pressure are usually in a lot of discomfort. They're sweaty, they're restless, their eye and head hurts, and oftentimes they're even throwing up in your practice. Doing a paracentesis will instantly relieve their symptoms. So it's definitely a useful skill for you to learn. Let's get into it. Here's what you'll need. A 30 gauge needle, a one milliliter syringe, a numbing agent, a disinfectant, and if you want to, a lid speculum. I personally don't use them, because I find them kind of clunky and uncomfortable for the patient. First, you want to make sure the patient's eye is numb. I use two to three drops of tetracaine with about five minutes in between. Then you want to make sure the eye is properly disinfected. I use two to three drops of a 10% betadine solution. If you don't know what to use, just ask your OR nurses to give you whatever the surgeons in your operating theater use to disinfect the eyes before cataract surgery. This procedure is completely painless. Tell this to your patients beforehand in order to calm them down. Ask them to look at your ear and push forward and down with their head. This will keep their head and eye stable during the procedure. Once your patient is well positioned, you need to connect the needle and the syringe without contaminating them. Then remove the plunger from the syringe. Now you're basically ready to go. However, I personally like bending the needle. This makes it much more ergonomic and easier to rest the hand on the patient's head. If I'm treating the patient's left eye, I'll bend and hold it this way. For the right eye, I'll bend it in the other direction. So depending on which eye you treat, you should have it bent the one or the other way. Because it's hard to film a 30 gauge needle for a video, I'll show you how to do this with a 25 gauge needle. First, you have to identify the bevel of the needle. It's this sloped part where the needle is coming to a point. You want to rotate the needle so the bevel is pointing at you. Then use the cap of the needle to bend it in the desired direction. Make sure you do this in a sterile fashion as this part is going into the patient's eye. Here's what it should look like at the end. Of course, doing it with a 30 gauge needle is exactly the same. Now, why did I just focus so much on the correct bevel position? The bevel dictates the orientation of the incision. If you keep the bevel pointing towards you, your incision is going to be parallel to the iris. Thanks to the curvature of the cornea and the intraocular pressure, this will make the incision self-sealing. If you rotate the incision by 90 degrees, it doesn't seal as well. Now let's see what this procedure looks like at the slit lamp. I use the needle to puncture the cornea parallel to the iris. You can see a little resistance, but it's not much. Then I just stay in there for a couple of seconds. By pushing down on the eye gently with your needle, you can estimate the pressure. Here at the beginning, you can see there's quite a lot of resistance when I'm pushing. And after a few seconds, you can see the eye gets a lot softer. Once you're happy with your pressure, you can remove the needle. As you can see, you're not taking tons of fluid out of the eye. Usually, you're just filling the tip of the needle. And this is basically it. Afterwards, measure the eye pressure to see if you have lowered it enough. If not, you can use the same needle track to enter the eye again. Here are a few caveats to keep in mind. One, make sure your AC is deep enough. If the pressure is elevated due to an angle closure, with a shallow AC, this is not the right way to treat it. Caveat number two, make sure you're going in perfectly parallel to the iris. You don't want to hit the lens, the iris, or the endothelium. For the first time doing this procedure, it's probably best to do it in a pseudophagic eye as you can't damage the lens. If you want to practice beforehand, you can use plastic or animal eyes to do so. Simuli has an eye specially developed for this purpose. However, Philips Studio eyes and Bionicle have usable eyes for this as well. 
Links to all of them will be in the description down below. Caveat number three, make sure you know the reason for the IOP pressure spike. If it's a neovascular glaucoma, you don't want to lower the eye pressure too rapidly as this could lead to some bleeding. If the eye is filled with viscoelastic, you won't be able to drain it with a 30 gauge needle. You'll need a bigger needle or paracentesis knife to create a bigger opening. In my practice, the most common indications for paracentesis are post-op IOP spikes after phaco, uveitics, and sadly, glaucoma patients that stopped using their meds. Let's quickly talk about your alternatives. Number one, eye drops. If the pressure is just slightly elevated, of course you're not going to do a paracentesis, you're just going to give some drops. However, keep in mind that the eye drops enter the eye through the cornea. And if you have a very high eye pressure pushing water through the cornea towards the outside, the eye drops are going to have a very hard time getting into the eye from the outside. In these cases, I like to lower the eye pressure with a para or diamox and then start the drops. This brings us to alternative number two, acetosolamide pills or IV fluid, or even mannitol IV. Of course, this is also a good option. I use Diamox if I have some time to bring the pressure down, because it usually takes about one to two hours to do its job. If you have a patient in your practice vomiting and in terrible pain, you don't want to leave them in their misery for two hours. So you're just going to do a para for these. Alternative number three is pushing on an existing paracentesis. If you have an IOP spike in the early postoperative phase and you can still find your para, you can release some aqueous through there. For that, you just need to take a blunt instrument like a cannula and push on the outer lip of the paracentesis. This will gape the wound temporarily and let some aqueous out. For beginners, it's usually easier to put some fluorescein in and do this under blue light because you can use the Seidel effect to see how much fluid is exiting the eye. Unfortunately, I don't have a slit lamp video of this, so I'm just showing you a surgical video with me doing this at the end of a FACO. That was it for this video and I hope you learned something. If you find value in this type of content, please subscribe to my channel, give the video a like, comment on the video, check out all my other videos, and most importantly, share this video with all of your friends and colleagues. This helps YouTube know that this is valuable content and it helps me grow the channel and make more videos for you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.